coming week uh, in the books. Now an opportunity to head out on the road. Uh, Going to take on the arrival in Western Michigan, the first leg of the race for the Michigan MAC championship. Walk us through the week and the week that was. We well, yeah, asked <clears throat> a little bit odd. I think we said like irregular um, having three non-conference opponents and we jumped into conference and we jumped back out of conference and now we're in the conference from here on out. Um, so it just feels as though there's another new start uh, to the season in terms of from here on out we're playing conference games. Uh, excited about that and obviously the a rivalry game with Western Michigan um, it uh, is is very apparent to all of us um, how how big of a game this is. Uh, we're excited for it. We usually go for Tom first, but we're opening it up to Rob Rubin first. Hey, Coach, uh, probably the first half of your game last week as a broadcaster, and I, I think maybe I sensed it, maybe I did. There, there was a level of frustration, I think, across the program in the sense that you're making plays. There was a perfect storm in a bad way. It's like every time we like we got a little get things going, we'd have a penalty or we'd have a drop or something. And the frustration level uh, by halftime maybe was maybe it was more of the move than it was by your staff. If anything happened in the second half, coach, it really was like, okay, we do we've been doing some good things, now it's starting to pay off. I I heard I heard most of what you were saying. I think you're saying, look, we were inconsistent. Um Offensively, in the first half, we would get things going, have penalties, turnovers. Um, and what was different in the second half? Is that? Yeah, he was wondering what. Yeah, just that it, it, it seemed to something happened. I don't know. It just seemed to work better. You weren't shooting yourself the foot as much. And I don't know if adjustments were made or players just started making plays. Yeah, probably a little bit of a combination of both. I mean, the game plan, you know, for us um, at halftime, we said, look, we, we've got to continue to do what we're doing. Made some adjustments, but talking offensively right now, um, they're, they're very aggressive. And so we knew that, you know, they were going to cause some problems at times, but that in the run game, we were at the same time then going to catch them out of a gap and we were going to crease them in the run game. And so just because we had a you know, uh, a dirty run or something that, you know, was a, a TFL or, or no yardage, it didn't mean that our run game wasn't going to go. And then in the pass game, uh, you know, we knew that it was going to be man and that we were going to have opportunities for explosive plays, but we had to hit on them. So <clears throat> we missed you know, on some, some awesome explosive play opportunities where – you know, it wasn't a schematic adjustment that we needed to make. We just, you know, sure up the protection, run a better route, you know, put the ball on them. And so we really did stick with our plan. Uh, and, you know, we made more plays. We still left a lot of plays out there. Uh, the penalties, obviously, they're always untimely, um, you know, and, and they can kill you. I think it was play six, you know, when we tried the reverse. Um, and we, you know, we had a lot of success in the first five plays. We're in their side, their territory, the other side of the 50. And, you know, when we watch the film, the reverse is a touchdown. Um, I mean, it's a hands down touchdown, uh, but it's not a touchdown if three technique, you know, doesn't get blocked and forces a, uh, a fumble and then a, a takeaway. So, um, I also think that there was, a, you know, some resolve at halftime. Just we're down 13-0. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, there, it, there certainly wasn't, you know, like hung shoulders and, and uh, you know, heads down. That wasn't the case at all. I mean, we absolutely knew that, that we could play better than we did. And um, so I think that there was some resolve just, you know, coming from the guys saying we're going we're gonna to get this thing done. Coach, anyway, people who haven't played football or been a part of it don't understand that every win is hard. Getting win is so hard. Your guys, I thought it was a huge win. I thought it was one of the better wins I've seen in our program for the fact that when everything goes wrong against a team, if a team doesn't have character, it'll fold. Your 
your team and show character coming back and dominating the second half. Did you have a sense that the players felt like this was a really good win at the end of the game or not? I think that <clears throat> I think that um, you know the the, the locker room uh, you know felt good. Um, I, I don't think that our guys, um, you know, expected that we were going to be down 13 nothing at half. So I think there's some disappointment with that. But I, I, do, um, I do think that they felt good about the fact that we, you know, uh, played better in the second half and came back. And, you know, I think our last seven or their last seven series or – well, we got six out of seven um, – stops defensively um, at the end of the game there. And obviously the fourth and one stop was just incredible. Um, offensively, you know, we scored 20 points, um, you know, in the second half. And, and uh, again, it feels though there was more out there um, that, uh, that didn't come to fruition. But, you know, it was, it was a good comeback, um, you know, again, against a MAC team. They're not in our conference, but – I just put them in that category where, you know, if you play really well, you've got a chance to win. And if you don't play well, then, then you're going to lose. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, UMass just fits that blueprint, you know, in terms of being in the MAC. Well, congratulations on a great win. Let's look forward now ahead a little bit to Western Michigan. No elevator this year. The quarterback's gone. Sky Moore down. We got to watch him play last night. What problems will this offense present that are either similar as we've seen in the past or something new? Uh, it'll, be, it'll be very similar. Um, you know, they're good at what they do, and um, even though some of the faces change, um, they've got guys who've developed. They'll have some guys who are back. I mean, their running backs are back, and um, uh, Crooms, their really talented receiver, is, is back. Um, and uh, but then they also develop guys and in, in our recruiting every year and every day and all of that. So, um, you know, lots of RPOs mixing up the run in the pass and uh, they're, they've got a system and, and they know it and they're good at it. How about defensively what they, what they showed so far? Um, oh, and also before I forget, uh, maybe an update on Taylor, his condition, possibly seeing him this week. I, obviously early in the week yet, I understand that. So maybe how he, if he does play, does that change, Coach, what you do if, uh, schematically if Taylor slides into goal or if it's Austin? Yeah. So first, defensively, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we've seen five games now, and, and, and so it's – you can start to trust what you're seeing. We're about halfway through the regular season. Um, very similar to last year. They're both in an even front and an odd front. Uh, some similarities to last week in that they're, they're very aggressive, very aggressive um, with pressure and, and movement. Um, uh, philosophically, I think that they want to, you know, create takeaways, um, negative yardage plays, uh, and they're good at it. You know, there's, they're ranked, you know, very high in the country in, in, in those areas. Um, and uh, do a really good job of disguising coverages and so you don't know exactly, you know, what you're going to get. Um, so similar to last year um, and then some similarities, you know, to, to last week just in terms of the philosophy of, you know, solving problems with aggression. Um, that, uh, that's what I think that they do. In terms of our quarterback situation, uh, Taylor was cleared um, last week, uh, later in the week, was able to practice some, but didn't get full, you know, clearance until the end of the week. In terms of that affecting um, our offense, our, again, we have a system as well, and I think any good system is always able to be manipulated to accentuate the strengths of your players. But that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you have a different offense. Um, so we're calling the same offense a tad bit differently at times, depending on um, who's in the game. Uh, 
But like for the rest of our the rest of our guys on offense, you know, they're not like, oh, okay, so now we're doing this, or I have to do this differently. That's not the case at all. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Yep. Have a great week. Hope we get the W this Saturday. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate you being on. Coach, could you talk about the mentality of Sparacio, who had to sit out the first half because of the target against Buffalo, and then makes maybe one of the biggest defensive plays of the game on that fourth and one where he blasts through and, and stops you, Maskell? Yeah, it's, it's always hard, right? Sitting for, for whatever reason, you're out for an entire half. He was engaged all week. Obviously, he knew that he had to sit the half. We all knew that, and so uh, planned accordingly. Um, there was no change in him in terms of effort, attitude, mental preparation, physical preparation. Um, and then, you know, there was uh, just some juice knowing that he was going to come back. I mean, everybody was excited for him and all of that. and. Um, Obviously, that that last play um, was just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, just just phenomenal. Won the game. I agree. Could you talk about the decision to go for two when you guys went up twenty to thirteen? Was the thought process behind that? Yeah, we do listen to the analytics when you start getting into the into the fourth quarter. That's when it, you know, the there's the mathematical side. Um, I'm more of a field coach than I am, um, you know, the, the analytics. And so it's a, a pretty interesting come together, um, especially when you have less than 40 seconds uh, sometimes to make those decisions. Um, it was an opportunity for us to go up two scores um, and not to win the game, but to make the game um, very, very difficult for them uh, to be in. Uh, we felt as though we had uh, a really good call. Uh, he had a couple options on that. The ball got tipped. He's got to get his elbow up, put it on it. Tanner's going to catch that ball, and you know we're not having this conversation. Um, but you know I'd be lying if I didn't say, you know, when they're driving and you know now we're only up seven, um, you know that kick an extra point really puts a lot of pressure on them. Now they have to score, right? Then they've got to go for two. Right. And all of that just takes it to overtime. And we're continuing to play. Right. Right. So what we said was we're going to go up two scores, uh, you know, put this game not out of reach, but make it really, really, really difficult. Um, but we also, you know, thought we had a good, a good call. I think that's the part of the analytics just, you know, and – disclosing my thought processes and whatnot. Um, the analytics can say fourth and one, you should absolutely go for it. Uh, what the analytics don't and can't calculate is, you know, it's the middle of the third quarter and, um, you know, we have negative three yards rushing on the year, right. right? And so you're telling me to go for it and, you know, I don't have something that's gonna get it. It could be fourth and seven and they're saying, you know, it's not a good idea, and if I know that we've got the right call that's going to defeat what they're in, you know, the, the analytics don't calculate that piece of it. Um, but so, um, yeah, uh, we were uh, aggressive might be a little bit too strong, but really felt as though that was the way to go, and it ended up working out, but we had to get bailed out. Coach, as you know, you have a chance to do something with this program this year that's never done, been done before, and that's beat Western four straight times. It's never been done in school history. I, did, to... I didn't know that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's never been done <laughs> yeah. before. Um, will that be involved in the – in a rivalry week like this, do you need much messaging to a team? Do you know they're going to come in with the energy and everything that needs? Is, are these the weeks you really don't need a pep talk? when you're playing against a rival against Lake Western? If, if we need a pep talk uh, for this game, then we've already lost. I mean, I'm just being right. honest with you. you know, the only thing that I did, <clears throat> I guess would have been last night in our team meeting was for all of you who are new, you know, um, there's a Michigan MAC trophy, um, you know, for the team that's really essentially able to beat both of the other two teams. And so that's got to play itself out throughout the throughout the season and, um, and uh, you know, it's an interstate rivalry 
and all of our games since since I've been here have been just absolute, you know, dog fights. Um, so if 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 our team needs a pep talk for this game, then we're we're way 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 far behind where we need to be to to do what you know we want to do. Thank you, coach. Uh, coach, a couple injury updates. I want to see if you can come. Uh, Dylan Drummond and Carter Evans. Are there any updates on those guys? I get that at four o'clock today, um, but the the plan was for Dylan to be able to. Um, uh, practice more this week um, so we're hopeful for him and then uh, Carter I'm, I'm really hopeful for him uh, as well but I, I really don't have an answer for you um, on him yet but I I will this afternoon okay. um, one issue that you guys have kind of had as a team uh, is a lot of penalties this year right now you're averaging 7.2 per game uh, big step up from last year where you guys were at 3.8 yeah how would you diagnose the issue there, and how do you guys? I don't know if you can coach them out of that, but if you can't, how could you be able to do that? Uh, we're always we're always trying, but I mean, it always starts with us as a staff. You know, I mean, you, you got to have a, a disciplined team. I mean, that's obviously part of it. Um, discipline in terms of snap count both ways, and discipline with the the fundamentals of technique and and all of those things, and. Um, so yeah, it is a concern. It's it's too. I, I tell the guys, and they all know it, that you know, championship caliber football is an average of five or less penalties in a game and fifty or less yards. Um, and uh, you know, we're we're over that right now. Um, so it's something that uh, we're very aware of, um, and we'll continue to coach. And you know, our guys don't want to to go backwards or to give teams first downs on third down by jumping off sides, it's, um, you know, it kills you. Yeah. And while I'm starting on the field, uh, Jalen Jackson certainly helping you guys. He's currently eighth in the nation in his kick return average. Um, sometimes you can't get to him all, sometimes Buffalo will let one long touchdown happen and then they'll never get to him again. What's it like having, you know, that new guy on the field and having him, of course he's doing great on offense too, but special teams, especially when you're really trying to like win the field position battle, what's it like having a weapon like I think if you asked our players, it'd be the same way that I feel about it. It's just exciting knowing that, you know, there's a guy with the ball in his hands that is really, really dynamic um, and can really, really hurt you. So I think there's a sense of just excitement, anticipation. I think that, you know, permeates through everybody on the unit, knowing that, you know, if 28 is going to have a returnable kick, that I'm going to, you know, block the best that I can, knowing that this there's a there's a real chance that something can can develop here. Yep. One more, Thomas Eck, Player of the Week again, twice now. He's been Player of the Week as a punter. Can you talk about him a little bit? I just heard that, and uh, so congrats to him and, and to the whole punt team. It's that's awesome. Um, you know, we were in here watching it yesterday, and and he did a really good job. Um, two of them just barely got away from us. I don't know if you remember. I mean, he had one land on the 15, and then it just kind of buzzed by the pylon, and they called it, you know, a touchback, which I, it probably was, but it was, you know, tough to tell, um, which was a bummer. And then we, we had a pooch where we made a, a play right at the goal line um, and didn't save it. And so it could have been like a monster game, right? I mean, we could have had two pinned inside the five. I mean, I'm talking about – legitimately had a chance of, of making that happen. Um, he has really, really come through. And thankfully, he hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities. Um, but he is he has absolutely come through um, with the opportunities that he's had. Thanks, Coach. Uh, two shoot downs in for this today, Tanner Canoe and Josh McCarty. Walk, walk us through uh, both of them uh, and what you've seen out of, out of their ability. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of Josh. I mean, he's exactly the kind of person and player that we want in our program. Um, he started out as a running back, 
um, and is a very, very good running back, plays so hard and is physically and mentally tough, um, an incredibly hard worker. I just never forget. I think it was sometime in the summer when they told me that you benched 405. It was you and a couple of other guys. I mean, um, and that's just due to his in incredible work ethic. We thought he was so aggressive and physical, and it was really good on special teams, that he'd be even better on defense. Um, and so talked to him about making that move, you know, and knowing that, gosh, you're essentially starting over, right? I mean, you put a couple years into running back, you know the offense, you know. And, um, but uh, he did it. He, he, we thought it would be best for him and best for the team. And, I mean, it was like, man, if that's what's best, let's do it. And um, has just, just like he does, jumped into that with every fiber in his body. Um, and then where it's showing is, is on special teams, right? Now on defense, he's tackling and, and all that all the time. And so he can really run, um, loves the game. And, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Sewell has our SEAL Team 6. We call it, you know, the E-Tough 6. Um, and, uh, you know, Josh McCarty is one of those guys with pictures, you know, on the cover of that. Um, guys who uh, care about and are really talented on, on, on our special teams units. Uh, Tanner Canoe um, is as good of a story as there is. Uh, just never forget meeting he and his dad in, in the bubble however many years ago as a talented basketball player um, from uh, <clears throat> Mason High School in, in Cincinnati and is and was really good friends with Preston Hutchison and uh, really kind of fell in love his senior year with football, um, although he was like basketball was his thing and um, wanted to give – uh, football a shot and uh, so from that point we recruited him really hard and uh, really wanted him here and, and he came and um, when COVID happened and the season was canceled did you actually put your hand on my neck or did you just Darth Vader me I mean he was he was so angry that the season was canceled because he wasn't going to be able to show and to prove um, how far he'd come and how good he was going to be. He just knew he'd put in so much work. I mean, and, you know, with COVID, you know, everybody was away from here, but he didn't miss, you know. Whatever it was that we wanted those guys to do, he was doing it and then some. And um, then the season comes back on, and um, he earned a scholarship after, after two games in this room right here. And, um, I've told this story a couple times, but I'll never forget it. You know, everybody's going nuts for him and whatnot, and I'm just watching, and it's it's awesome. I'm standing up at the podium, and it's kind of dying down, but guys are just, you know, going back to their seats, and he comes up to me and whispers in my ear. It was like Adrian and Rocky. Um, and he just said, this is only going to make me go harder. So, and uh, I didn't kiss him on the lips because there was uh, – too many people in the room, um, but that's just who he is. And he's just, he's awesome. Um, he's so focused. Um, he cares so deeply. Um, uh, did I say how selfless he is? I mean, you know, those guys are just dreams to coach. And um, he's off to another uh, really good start. Uh, he's got, you know, so much more that he's capable of and um, excited to see that unfold. All right, fellas. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, Tanner, <clears throat> watching your play, I didn't realize, early on when I watched you play, I didn't realize how fast you were. What did you run for? Are you a four five guy, do you think? Um, so we, we've tested 40s in the off season, and I wasn't at my uh, uh, tip top shape, so I don't really wanna, wanna talk about my 40 time, but I think uh, Coach DMAC has just came in, and uh, you guys have probably heard it before, but he's, he's just come in and, and completely taken over this program and changed the culture of how we work. And 
I just think I can attribute um, anything, any of my successes to not only him, but everybody else on this team because he's just put so much in and, and you could see it with myself and, and Josh who's sitting in here and, and everybody else on the team. We've just gotten so much faster, stronger, and it, you can see it in our play. So I just, I can attest that to him. Well, with a ball receiver, there's a lot of things that you do, Tanner, that I've seen and I know are quality, really good assets. What do you feel your assets are that you bring to me? So I think, uh, I, I, I can agree with that because when I'm watching football too, I I only just just watch the receivers. I don't watch the football. I watch the receivers so I can I can relate to that. But the two things that I, I, I think I, I bring to the table is is my mind and that's that's the thing that that's the first thing and then just playing harder than, than other people. So those are two things that I feel like set myself apart from from most people is um, I've I've had so many coaches um, so many older guys who are who are now graduated have just mentored me. Coaches have given me so much knowledge, and I think just being able to use that on the field just makes me play faster. And then playing harder than everybody. I, I feel like um, we have two very good running back. We have a room full of really good running backs. We have so many athletes on the team, and I feel like just getting the extra block. Um, doing the extra mile can set them up for a touchdown. So I feel like um, playing harder than everybody else is, is a big deal. Did you feel like the, the pressure valve released a little bit when you scored that 39 yard touchdown when Austin Smith hit you up the middle there and you guys went up 14, 13? Did you guys finally feel like the tide had changed a little bit in that UMass game? Well, I feel like the whole game we were confident, especially the offensive side. Me and Austin, we were in each other's ears. He's Austin's done an unbelievable job um, this season, and he's just – he's so – he's young, but he's so confident. He is, he's just so calm, and I feel like his calmness just uh, rubs off on the entire offense, and I feel like we were just calm, confident, and, and knew we were going we to hit, hit one of those shots because, as Coach Creighton said earlier, we, we were taking shots, but we just weren't connecting on them. There were just a few little miscues, but we knew the shots were going to come. So uh, we always knew that we were, we were going to be able to take advantage of them, and I think we just did in that, that situation. Your thoughts about Western? Yeah, Tanner. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I'm sorry. You got cut off. I wanted to I asked Tanner what you did well, Tanner, and the beautiful thing about that is you weren't dependent on your parents or either of those. When you work hard, that's on you. You think and you, and you study, that's on you. You can control those things. But there's some things that you do that I know is Tanner that may be modest to say, but you're a great grabber of the football. And I, as being a former receiver, I never taught, and a coach, I never taught my guys to catch the ball, grab the ball, wait for your body, and you do a wonderful job of that. I think you're deceivingly quick and you're starting to stopping on your route running when you stop and change of directions, that's very good. Well, you made a point, Tanner, about making the extra block. If you continue to do that, you keep working at that next level, you may make 10 of them that aren't going unnoticed, but when you make that 11th one, all of a sudden the other receiver is going to come behind you with the ball. You know that. But uh, I, just, I just, like I said, I just truly enjoy your game between you and Haas and Dylan. I think we have three of the smartest clutch receivers there are, not just in the, in the MAC, but around the country. So this is just a thank you to be the broadcaster with Tom, the guy there that looks like a Brian Greasy. Uh, we appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Tanner, as you look right. at Western. Thank, you, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, Tanner, as you look at Western, what they, what they present defensively and what it would mean to you to be part of a team that could beat Western four straight years for the first time in school history. So I I just came from from watching film on Western. I think they're they're so when I watch film, I watch their 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 second their secondary. So I don't really watch anything else. So I think they have a lot of very good athletes on on their secondary, and they do a very good job of getting hands on down the field. So I think um, they're gonna oppose, they're gonna present a really good test for us. But as a competitor among a team of competitors we look forward to to going against them because they have a really good group of guys 
over there and just Western Michigan, it's a rivalry game, you know, and it's a, a crucial MAC game. And our our mantra is, is stack them, and we want to we want to go one and zero every single week. So whoever we play, and the, and right now that's Western Michigan. We we want to attack them. And we want to give them everything we got, and that and that's what we're we're gonna do this week. Thank you. What do you remember about playing Western Michigan in the games before? Because I know the 2020 game was a lot of points, and then last year was not as many points, but you guys still came away with a you know big win. What is, what do you know about playing Western from years past, and then what are you expecting you know this weekend? From years past, so. Like you said, 2020, we, uh, I think we threw the ball on them a lot in 2020. And then in 2021, it was the complete opposite. We, did, we were running the ball. So I think um, that just can attest to a, Coach Creighton's philosophy is we're going to take what the defense gives us, and, and whatever they give us, that's, that's where we're going to take. So. Mm -hmm. scholarship lead the teams, you and Haas and a bunch of other guys. What's it like just like being that and then not only, you know, living through that yourself, but then watching other guys, you know, have that same sort of excitement too? I think it's it's unbelievable and it, it talks to the program's culture because I I feel like my parents say it to me all the time is whenever they come up and meet the people on the team, they just say you're just so lucky and blessed that you're surrounded by such great people and the, the great people, they're, they're, they're hard workers and they love each other. So I remember my, when I got my scholarship, the entire team rushed me. And that was, that was just as good or better than getting the scholarship because it just showed how, how happy everybody was for me. And I can honestly say like, I have the same feeling when I see other people get put on scholarship. So we just had two get put on scholarship. And it was such a great feeling because I knew exactly how I felt when everybody rushed me and showed how excited they were for me because that's how I feel for them. And another thing that I've noticed is when people get put on scholarship, you would think like they would, they would take off and, and not work as hard. But I've noticed the opposite. Some people go even harder and that's something I really enjoy and, and like watching about people. Mm -hmm. When he did transfer out, because you guys had like the you know breakout season together in 2020. Yeah. When he did transfer out, was that a little bit more like like motivation for you to be like, no, this wasn't just like a, me and my friend just like cooking up things at Eastern. Like I'm good. Like I belong on this field with or without you know my high school friends. Yeah. So I to speak on Preston a little bit. Preston, um, he he basically got got me here. I I was trying to walk on um, at a Division One school. And I thought, and I believed that I could play at a Division One school. So I, I, all I needed was an opportunity, and Preston was the person who helped me get that opportunity. And then I think that um, Preston's an incredible player. The, the opportunity just didn't work out. But he, he's an incredible player, and I feel like I'm, I'm a good player. So I, both of us didn't think it was a fluke. We, we uh, were very confident. And, and seeing Preston walk, it, uh, a transfer to another another school was was hard because he was my best friend and uh, he is someone that I, he was my roommate, um, someone who was my mentor, my best friend, and it was just hard seeing him walk. But I, I'm super uh, proud and happy for him at uh, Tennessee Chattanooga because he's playing uh, great football. Um, I think he was their conference player of the week twice, and I just think we both are are very confident in our abilities. So. We, we both knew it wasn't a fluke. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're going to be 100% this week? You look like you're a little. Uh, I have some uh, inflammation and fluid going up in my knees, so I just have to keep the inflammation down. All right. Hey, how's it going? Could, could you talk a little bit about uh, the defensive performance against UMass? It seemed like. Uh, their quarterback was able to do a lot of quarterback draws, get up the middle on you guys. What kind of adjustments did Neil Nethery and you guys as a defense make there to adjust in the second half and really small them up? I mean, we had a game plan coming into it, a um, simplified game plan. And then going into the game, we just knew we had to execute. And uh, I mean, coming into halfway down 13-0, we had the same game plan. Kept the same game plan, coming out uh, just this 0-0 mentality. 
Uh, we came up the second half with just a mentality that we're going to win this game and come out with the victory. And uh, that fourth and one stop was huge for us, and uh, that's allowed us to make it happen. Can you talk about Sparacio and that hit he made on that fourth and one, what, like defensively? I mean, that was that was a game winner, yeah. maybe the biggest defensive play of the year so far. Yeah, that was definitely huge. That was a game winner. Um, Joe just, I mean, that just shows like his dedication, his hard work. He comes in every day. He's ready to work. He had the right mindset coming into the game, knowing he wasn't going to come in to the second half. And he was ready, prepared. And then when the time came, uh, he just made the play. And that was huge. I know you guys are just getting into the film on Western, but what kind of challenges do they present to you guys offensively? I mean, uh, Western's a good team. They have a lot of athletes, like uh, Coach said earlier. Scott Moore transferred out, but I mean, everyone has guys coming up that they're ready, that they're preparing for, that they bring in. And uh, Western's a great team. They have a lot of talented guys. Uh, we're going to get the game plan tomorrow and then execute and uh, hopefully come out with the victory. Are you happy on the defensive side of the ball? I know you started on the offensive side. Oh, I mean, yeah, I started with offense for the first two years here. And then I was playing running back. And then they switched me uh, right before, actually, the season started last year. And uh, defense has been fun. I mean, I didn't really play it much in high school. But uh, I like defense. I mean, it's fun to come downhill, fill gaps. Uh, I mean, play the pass, get interceptions, all that. It's really fun. So I'm liking it. Is there a player that took you under wing on the defensive side of the ball and they flipped you over and it's been, it's been kind of your mentor on that side of the ball? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Blake Bogan, actually, he's a senior here. Um, he's really, really helped me ever since I switched positions. Blake was the first guy. We went in the film room. Uh, he was drawing up plays for me. He was really helping me out. And I really appreciate Blake for that. Like, he really took me under his wing and uh, made sure that I knew what I was doing. Every day he was on me. If I did something wrong, we were in the film room. He was making sure, oh, you got to do this right. You got to call this right. So uh, Blake really took me under his wing, and I appreciate him for that. Has it been hard mentally on Blake being out? Uh, I mean, I just took Blake home today. He was in treatment. Uh, I mean, he's kept his head up high. I mean, this is his last year, so it's kind of tough on him. But uh, Blake's still really into it. I mean, he's going to treatment. I mean, I think it's three times a day. So he's kept his head high. And uh, I think Blake's in a, I mean, he's a great athlete, great player, great mentor. So he'll be good off. And you're also like bringing a lot more to the table with kind of special teams this year, too. What is it that's, I don't know if there's like a stigma around like special teams. I don't know if it's because like people who watch games just like that's the time to go to bed or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what do you think like people should know more about special teams? Because I don't think that's like a base of the game where you can just find like just a random third string player and just put them out there. Like you actually have to be like good at your assignments and good at what you do out there. Right. I mean, especially with us, I mean, we play special teams really hard, really tough. I mean, speaking on it, special teams is a thing where like, I mean, guys like me, that's where we get our opportunity, like people out there really like going hard and trying to like prove to themselves and prove to everyone else. And uh, special teams just means, uh, I mean, it's a game changing play. Like people say punt if you down a ball with inside the five. I mean, that's a great position for the defense to come out and succeed. So I mean, special teams can be a game changing play. Uh, kick up return, if you return one to the house, I mean, I mean, that changes the game. So a special team is definitely a thing where it's just like, I mean, it wins and changes games. Do you have any like personal goals for yourself that you just like want to like play a big hit on somebody this year, or like, do you have any like personal goals for yourself this year? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I just go into every week with the same mindset: just uh, work hard, get better, prepare, and then get the game plan and execute. So I really just go into the game with just uh, ready to execute my plan, uh, the goals we have set for the special teams unit, and then just go out there and do what I do. Rob. Guys, I'm just curious, being a little awesome defense, because uh, I, I wasn't playing in, but I played special teams in the NFL, I hated that. I think that made it hurts. I never minded getting hit. How was the adjustment for you from being getting hit, which to me never really hurt, to tackling? Right. I mean, I see myself as a physical person. I mean, running the ball, I was more of like a downhill, one cut type of guy, just like fill the hole and someone's in my way. I mean, either. You're gonna get out of my way, or I'm gonna get tackled. But uh, so I mean, defense coming down, to, like going back on the defensive side. Um, I mean, it really wasn't that big of a change for me. Besides, I was just on the opposite side of the ball. But I mean, I love coming down, filling gaps, being physical, taking on blocks. I mean, I feel, I feel like that feeds into my nature of, my, of the game. So um, in terms of like, getting big hits and all that, I love that the drill and feeling of just coming off and getting a big hit. It's just something I, I mean, I love to do. So it really wasn't that big of a change physically wise. So you're, you're ultra late, correct? Yes, sir. Orchard yep. Lake kid? Orchard Lake, yeah. St. Mary's. Did you play defense? Did you, did you play for George? Is Port still there? Yeah, I played for Port. Um, well, actually, I moved to varsity my third year. Was, I was at Port uh, my sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. And then the year after I left, um, that's when Port 
uh, decided it was time to leave as well. So. But you played both ways your senior year to play defense? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, Poor was a big stickler on guys only playing one side of the ball. So when I was at St. Mary's, uh, when I was on varsity, I really was only playing offense. I was just a running back primarily, um, special teams, kick return and all that. But I really wasn't playing much defense. I mean, I played a few plays outside linebacker, defensive end. But other than that, it was mostly just at running back, no defense, really. Well, I, I love seeing your success. Keep it up. We need all the help we can get. I appreciate that. Yes, sir, will do. Perfect.